Welcome back student to yet another tutorial for open office base where we are going to start with session 2. In session 2 we are going to create and edit tables using wizard and SQL commands we will cover when we will start with the SQL commands specifically. Introduction to RDBMS, database objects, tables, queries, forms, reports, the terms used in database like table, field, record and so many. Then we are going to create the table using the wizard and using design view what are the different data types in database how to set the primary key and we are going to add the records in the table as well so first we are going to start with rdbms so data in relational database management system or rdbms for short is organized in the form of tables this is a table the vertical ones are known as the columns and the horizontal lines are the rows so a table consists of columns and rows rdbms is a collective set of multiple data sets organized by tables records and columns and relational database is known as with the name you can identify relational relational means the the database which has some relation so the tables are interrelated with each other you can see there is a relationship between the database tables that's why it is known as rdbm now a rdbms this is important uses sql sql is structured query language which is a standard user application which provides an easy programming interface for database interaction so if you want to use the database for adding the record deleting the records or tables and other objects like form queries you need to have an interface and that interface is provided by sql sql is structured query language now we have different database objects like tables in the table we have columns columns are also known as fields or attributes you could be asked in the form of MCQ so learn it by heart similarly the horizontal lines they are rows they are also known as records and tuples which I have told you in my previous video then we are going to learn how to create the database in open office when you create the database the very first thing that you are going to create is the table that we will learn but before that we have some more terms to learn now in this table you could be asked which column or attribute or field could serve as primary key so you will compare the values data values these are data values like uh, the first row or you can say the record or tuple is e1 rahul clerk and salary is 20,000 so these are four values or data values out of these columns employee ID is the column which is having unique values each row each row is having a different value here the employee name we can have the repetition over here we can have two Rahul we can have two couple or three couples similarly the post could repeat itself like here we can have two clerks similarly the salary could be the same but the employee ID the value over here in this column is different so the column which is having all different values could be assigned as primary key so a primary key never repeats the values then you could be asked about what is the degree of the table so degree of the table is how many columns you have in the table so you have one two three four four columns employee id employee name e name post and salary four columns so the degree of the table is four similarly you are asked about the cardinality sometimes you could be asked about it what is the cardinality the cardinality is the number of rows you have in the table so we have one two three four rows you will not count this as a row row means the record so you have four records you have the record of four persons the cardinality is four then we are going to learn about sql command type like ddl dml dcl and tcl under ddl which is data definition language we have create drop alter truncate just learn them by heart from the point of view of your exam similarly in dml we have select insert update delete ddl deals with the table this commands are used for tables while dml is used for the records in the table dcl is grant and revoke tcl we have commit rollback save point let's learn about the ddl that is data definition language DDL changes the structure of the table by creating the table, deleting the table, altering a table. Means when you create the table for the first time, 
it is the DDL command. The SQL command is going to be the DDL command. Like create table. Similarly, if you want to add some column, as I told you, like uh, in my previous video, I have a table where I have the student table in which uh, we have student name, uh, student uh, contact number, and email ID. Suppose if I want to add address of the student, so I have to add another column or field. So for that, I will use alter command, alter table and then add the column. So that is going to be the DDL command. Similarly, if I want to delete a table, again, this is DDL command. Now, what are the different commands? It is create, alter, drop, truncate. Create is used to create a new table in the database, always, okay? Drop, it is used to delete both the structure and the record stored in the table. Structure means, the structure of the table is, it has four columns. Employee ID, e name, post, salary. When you create the table, it is empty table. Okay, so that is the structure that you create when you create a table. That after creating the table, you insert the record, fill in the data. So they are the records. You can see it is used to delete both the structure and the records stored in the table. The next one is the alter command. It is used to alter the structure of the database. So you can add a new column, you can delete a column, or you can modify a column. Suppose uh, you have taken the name of the employee could be maximum 20 characters but there is an employee who whose name is having more than 25 characters so in that case you have to change the st structure of the table you have to change the feed length the name should have at least maximum 50 characters so you are going to change the structure of the table using the alter command next we have the truncate truncate is used to delete all the rows within that table so the table will be there if you want to uh, delete all the records but you want your table to be there so it is when you use the truncate command the records within the table will be deleted and it is going to be the empty table structure will be maintained so all the columns will remain same only the records will be deleted so that is the difference between the truncate and drop table command you could be asked the difference between the two next we have data manipulation language dml now this DML is used to modify the database. What is the database means the records. What are different commands within the DML? It is select, insert, update, delete. Select it is used to find out like you have the student name and total marks or average marks of the students. You want to find out how many students are there in the class who has scored more than 75. So that is a kind of query. For that, you will use select command. Select students from the table whose marks are more than 75. So where clause will be used when you use the select command. Next one is insert. When you want to insert the record in the table, you use insert command. It is used to insert data into the row of the table. Update in case you want to change your contact. Suppose there is a student whose contact number or home address has been changed. So how you are going to change it using the update command. This command is used to update or modify the existing values in the table. Now next is delete command. Delete command is used to delete the rows or the records or tuple from the table. Next is data control language that is DCL. DCL has two commands grant and revoke. It is basically used to give rights or authority to the users. Suppose you want to give any rights that the user can modify the data also then you will use the grant command if you want to take some uh, rights from the user then you will use revoke command grant is used to give access or rights to the user while revoke is used to take back permission from the user last is transaction control language that is tcl it is used with dml uh, commands like insert update and delete and the TCL commands are commit rollback and save point. Commit command is used to save all the transition to the database. Suppose you have done some changes and now at the end of the day you are satisfied with the changes that you have done. So there you use commit command. Rollback command is used to undo the transactions that have not already been saved to the database. Suppose you have made some changes but it is not saved. So at any point of time you can roll back. Save point, it is used to roll the transaction back to a certain point without rolling back to the entire transaction. Now let's understand different terms which are used in table. This is a table employee table 
where we have employee ID, Aadhaar number, E name, job, salary, department number. These are all columns, attributes, or field. Employee ID is the field which is having different values. However, Aadhaar number is also different. E name could be repeated, job, salary, department number could be repeated, but Aadhaar and employee ID they are different. So we can have any one of them, any column could be chosen as primary. So we have two candidates over here which could be used as primary key, employee ID and Aadhaar. Here we have chosen employee ID as primary key, so Aadhaar number will be your alternate key, okay? Now in this table we can see the department number is there and this is a primary key in the table department. Now when the primary key is used to create the relationship between with another table that key is used to refer the records from the parent table to the child table. So here this column will be used as foreign key. When it is a primary key the values will not repeat but here, when you use this column as foreign key, the values could be repeated. Let's revise composite key one more time. Composite key, as I told you, is the combination of two or more fields. When they are combined together, they can uniquely identify the record in the table. Now, in this one, supplier ID, it is repeating itself. Similarly, item ID is also repeating itself. But if I combine the supplier ID and item ID together, it will create a unique value. Can you see that? S1, I1, S1, I2. Similarly, S2, I2, the values are not going to repeat. So here, supplier ID and item ID both are combined together and used as primary key. Now, this is a composite key where the two columns are joined together. Next is the candidate key. Candidate key means like in election, we have the candidate. One of them could be the leader. One of them wins. The other are the alternates. Now, here we have student ID which is having all the unique values. We have rollover, which is the, having all unique values. Similarly, email address is also unique. So there are three columns in this table, student ID, roll number and email, which could be served as primary key, which could be assigned as primary key. So now let's suppose I have taken student ID as primary key. In that case, roll number and email will be the alternate keys. Let's understand the primary key and foreign key examples over here. In this student detail, the student ID is the primary key. If suppose I want to find out how many marks Sara has got. For that, I have to refer the table student marks. Student marks is using two columns, ID, student ID and marks. So I have to match the ID of Sara with this table. Now, so Sara ID is 1041. So I will look for 1041 in student marks table and I'll find out the marks for Sara. See one more example over here, student ID, course ID. So the course ID will tell you the course name. If you want to find out what is the course that James is pursuing, you will refer this table. So James is pursuing accounts. This is important. Primary key, when it becomes foreign key, the values could repeat itself in the table. So the values over here for the course ID could repeat, but here they are different. This is all what we have to cover. In case you have any doubt, you can write in the comment section and tune into my channel for the coming videos.